For this part of the tutorial series, we'll be adding a little bit more functionality to our scene and learn how to manipulate the object and place the object in the scene with on-screen touch gestures. To do that, we'll have to go to the asset store. The asset store has moved online, so we'll just click this link to open up the website. Make sure that you're logged in and that your account is connected to both the online store and Unity Hub. If you aren't logged in, make sure to close the program, restart it, and log in. So we'll be searching for Lean Touch. And we'll select this free asset and add it to your account. I've already added it, so all that shows is open in Unity. What I found is that in this version of Unity 2020.3, it's that this button doesn't open in Unity automatically. So what we'll have to do instead is go back to Unity, make sure to save and refresh, do whatever you need, and go to Window, Package Manager. Once the packages have loaded, change this to My Assets. It should automatically upload the different packages you have associated with your account. If everything has worked successfully, you should see Lean Touch appear in this list. All you have to do is import it into the scene. I have already imported Lean Touch into my project, so I won't do that again. In order to start Lean Touch and have it working in the scene, we have to go to the hierarchy, right click, go to Lean and Touch, and create the Lean Touch object. Now what we want to manipulate is not only the model itself, but the shadow and all the lighting that we've added as well. So to do that, we'll create an empty object and name this. And we'll take all of these and make it a child of the object manipulated so that when we move this, everything moves together. Now all we have to do is we'll add component, look for lean, pinch, scale, and change the required finger count to two. That way it uses two fingers to pinch and scale the object. Then next we'll add lean, twist, rotate axis. We're using the rotate axis instead of rotate so that we can constrain it to just one axis. Now that we've added all that basic functionality, to, in order to have the model drag around the screen, we'll have to create our own script. So right click, create C sharp script, and we'll name this drag to move. And we'll double click and open the script. Now this is the script that we will be using to manipulate, to be able to drag across the screen and have our object follow along with it. I've put some comments in the script that describes the different parts. We first create a touch variable and a floating variable that controls how fast the model moves. You can change this number manually if you feel like you would like to move your model slower or faster. At the start, this variable is set. Every frame, this script will be looking for an input, but of a touch. If the touch is greater than zero, then we'll get that touch and we'll set a condition for when the touch is being moved and the, gest the drag gesture is being performed. When this gesture is performed, will transform the position of the object and assign a new vector value to the object. We'll keep the original X of the car, add that to how much our finger has moved in that frame and multiply it by the speed. We'll keep the original Y of the car and leave that the same, but we'll change the Z value of the car and do the same, adding the amount that we have moved our finger and multiplying it by the speed. Now save this script 
and minimize it. And it should reload in your Unity program. Once that's done, click on your object and add the script. You can build and run to see if this works. The last thing we'll be doing is creating a script to place our object in their scene. In order to do that, we'll have to create a script. Create a script and name this object placement. This script is a little bit more complicated. We create an array of virtual objects and buttons that we can change the value of and add however many objects and buttons we would like to the scene. We also have an indicator that will appear on the planes to show us where our object will be placed. We'll save this and go back to our scene and we'll create an empty object for our script. And we'll add this script to the empty. Now, for this object manipulated, we'll drag it here and make it a prefab so it's all packaged into one thing. And we'll say there are one object that we're placing, one button that we're pressing, and we'll add, we'll have to import an indicator to use. I have this image that PNG that I've imported. We can change this texture type to spread into the UI. Make sure to hit apply. We'll have to create 3D object quad and use this as our indicator. Let's reset the positions. Make this smaller and then rotate it down so it's flat on the ground. We'll have to create a material for our indicator. So right click, create, material, indicator, material. We, I see that we've had a lot of different objects going on. In order to keep organized, we can separate things into folders. In this indicator material, we'll change this to UI unlit transparent and we'll drag this as the texture. Once that's done, we can just add that to our scene and bam, we have our indicator. But for now, let's drag it into our assets and uncheck this. Now on our object placement, we can add the indicator to the indicator variable. And under virtual objects, we can add our object manipulated. The last thing we'll have to do is create a button. And to do that, we'll have to create a canvas and add some UI. So go to UI, canvas, Then we'll right click UI button. Let's see where the button is in the canvas. Let me drag this over here so I can see. The button is pretty small. So let's multiply this by three, maybe. Multiply this also by three. Still seems pretty small, but let's move it down a bit and change the text to place object. Let's change the font size to 40. Still seems kind of small, so I'll multiply this by maybe 1.5. This by one, change this to 60. That's a lot better. Don't forget to anchor your button to the bottom. So 
that no matter the screen size, it will continue to stay in the same relative position. We'll first, we'll rename this object button. We are almost done with our app. There are a few things that need to be changed and added before we build and run to our phones. So let's go to this object manipulated. I've already done it myself. I reset the sample model's position back to zero and positioned all the lights accordingly so that when we, when we move the model around on the screen, it is fixed to a central location and it's not moving from an offset position. Once that's done, you can go back to your canvas and the place object button and let's add a click event so that when we click the button, it will actually perform the place object function. Right now, nothing is attached. So let's add on click event and drag and drop our ob object placement to our place object button. Then we can look for the function place object. And now when we press on the button, it'll perform the place object function. Let's save and run and see how this looks. When we first run the app, it needs to calculate the planes. After you give it a second, then you'll be able to see planes near scene. I still have my plane visualizer turned on, so it is also calculating that. You can turn that off if you want. So now that I've pressed my place object button, I can see my object in the scene. And I can use my touch gesture to scale it up and move it around and drag it within this plane. I can also use a twist function to turn it around and see it in 360. Everything is working great. For the third part of this tutorial series, we'll be playing with occlusion and image recognition to see how we can find different ways we can instantiate or create an object into our air environment.